Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. This broadcast is a direct sequel to last June's Shadow of a Doubt. Someone posted a story here a couple weeks ago, telling the story of how we went back to the now-empty haunted house I used to live in in an attempt to contact the thing, which we suspect followed and haunted my older sister. That story was crazy intense and one of the most frightening experiences in that house, but he didn't really have time to mention in that thread much of the backstory, all the little things that happened in that house before we moved out of it, long before we went back that day with a bunch of friends and a Ouija board. It's all little tiny unrelated anecdotes, but some of them are scary, and I think you guys would enjoy them because y'all are some twisted individuals. Some are much less creepy than others, and some are only kind of strange, but the sheer quantity of things that happened paints a really disquieting story. Here's a sample. Watching a movie late at night on the big screen with little brother and older sister and her BF. See little bro get up from the long couch and walk across the room to the corner where the bookshelf is. Can see it's him because the black silhouette is closest to his height. Sister starts to laugh. WTF, are you doing M? Why did you go sit in the corner? There is like no furniture over there or anything and you can't even see the TV from there. What is he doing? Bro answers from the couch uncertainly. Um, I didn't. WTF, we all literally just saw a silhouette cross in front of the screen. I race for the kitchen light, I'm closest. But sister's BF vaults over the back of the couch and reaches it first. Brother in the same spot. Never got off the couch, no one in the corner, no one else is even home. What? I have a million of these. Want more? Here's another in case anyone's here. Be on the computer in my mom's master bedroom. Very focused on my homework, but see littlest sister walk in and go into the master bathroom, presumably to do hair or something. Start talking to her, complaining about my homework. Eventually ask her a question and she ignores it. At this point I say, hey D, are you even listening? Go into the bathroom. My face when it's empty. I nope downstairs and find her on the couch. She's been down there with her friend the whole time. It was not the first and not the last time this happened. This seeing someone out of the corner of your eye who wasn't there thing happened to every person who lived there and to friends who didn't. Most often, the person was mistaken for the littlest sister, except when it was the littlest sister who saw it. These are only mildly disconcerting things so far. It gets so much worse than that. These are so out of order. Sorry, it's been many years. First truly frightening thing I can remember. Seventh grade. First year we lived there. I'm the first one who gets home every day. Get home and open the front door. Massive amount of silverware clatters in the kitchen. Like five or so people all drop some at once. I'm ready to yell at my cat until I look over and see him jumping off the front windowsill to see WTF that noise was. Haha, <laughs> you think I went into the kitchen to see what it was? I'm not a dumbass. I've seen scary movies. Slammed the front door closed and waited on the porch for my sister to get home. No one inside, no silverware out of place. Okay, another random thought here. The thing about that cat I mentioned, Spanky, was it was crazy smart. We've had a lot of cats in my life, but this cat outlived them all. He was the type that could unlock doors and shit. He was always super in tune to what was happening. Like the time our other cat, Tuv, died. Spanky got into my sister's room and meowed at her till she woke up. He was normally a silent cat. The point being, we all had a level of respect for the cat. Anyway, as soon as we moved into that house, he started acting so strange. He would make rounds as we started to call them. Like he'd go through every room of the house in the same order several times a day every day, always circling the room like he was freaking casing the joint or something. He had never done anything like that before, and he never did it again in any other house we lived in. We'd always joked that he was supernatural, but he legitimately started to creep us out after all this other shit started happening in that house. Bruh, cats are legitimate spiritual wards. Keep them around. Yeah, that cat was really something else. Sometimes he would leave for days on end and then just come back like nothing happened. It was weird because he was a house cat and he was never the kind of cat that tried to bolt when you opened the door. But sometimes he would just slip out for a few days and then come home. Towards the end of that time living there, he would be gone for longer and longer when we left. And we had had so many cats before that we knew what it meant when a cat left and didn't come home. Either it got attacked or eaten by a coyote or it was sick and it crawled away somewhere to be alone and die. I would start to grieve every time he was gone too long, but he always came home again. 
The last time he was gone for two weeks and came back nearly emancipated, but he came back. He would always go back to doing his rounds, room to room. We would call it his guard duty. He loved to patrol that stupid hall where we always saw the shadow, and he would go as far as L's door, which was farther than either of the dogs would go. Anyway, not long after I moved away from home, my mom calls, saying Spanky's been missing for more than a couple days, and she has a bad feeling that we won't see him again this time. I tell her she's probably mistaken. He always comes back. He's a tough little guy. But when I get off the phone, I'm crying already, IDK. I just knew. We didn't see him again. He was too smart to go where the coyotes go, too tough to be taken down by a neighborhood cat. He was old, and he probably just crawled under a bush and closed his eyes. But it made me think about all those times he disappeared from the den house. Like maybe he knew he was going to die, but he kept coming back for guard duty. Maybe he finally left for good when we moved because he was no longer needed for duty. God, I miss that cat. Cats are bros, man. But dogs are too. I honestly believe cats and dogs have an unusual ability to diminish the hold of a spirit on something. I used to be in the presence of a witch tree near my apartment. Literally, people would come out of their apartments to make sure each other were all right due to something causing a ruckus and such on the residents. There was also a chair near the playground behind the apartments that would creak very loudly at night, and a vacant laundry shop behind us that would power up every now and then. Seriously, if you're ever in Euless, Texas, check out Spring Valley Apartments. I remember having a night of waking up to loud screams and banging on my bedroom door. My cat ran past it and my dog growled and it just vanished. I'll post a really creepy one since I haven't started to really get to those yet. One day, playing with a Ouija board in the dining room. First time we ever messed with one. Shits and giggles, we're not taking it seriously at all. I mean, my mom was even in air with us making fun of it. Sister joking asks the spirit to punch our friend in the face. Friend laughs and says, Wouldn't it be funny if I just started bleeding out of nowhere after you said that ha ha? We laugh. My mom suggests it's time we play a funner game. We agree, this is pretty boring. As we try to put it away, blood starts dripping from the friend's nose. We point it out, crap you're bleeding. She rushes to the sink, blood pouring out of her nose now. The nosebleed doesn't stop for 20 minutes. Later I ask my sister if she remembers what Ace said right before that happened. Sister is like, ha ha, it's just a coincidence. Yeah well then a ton of coincidences happened in that house. Scariest apartment story I can think of off the top of my head. Elle and her roommate R start getting late night pranksters. Someone banging on the door at really late hours. They never get there in time to catch them. Start getting really damn annoyed. One day Elle is going to take out the trash and her hand is on the door handle when the loud knocking happens. She whisks open the door, ready to yell at some stupid kid. There's no one there or on the stairs leading down to the first floor. Person would have had to vault over the wall and down 30 feet in order to get out of sight that quickly. Needless to say, L and R are freaked the fuck out and they call R's BF to come over and stay the night with them. They wait outside on the stairs because they're too freaked out to go inside. They're sitting there in silence when they hear the knock again coming from the inside of their apartment. I'm telling you guys I could not make this shit up if I tried. An acquaintance from across the street asks who the heck lives in the upstairs leftmost bedroom. We ask why. Because they are always standing at the window at night, it creeps us out. We're like, nope, 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 nope. Let me give you a hint. They were referring to L's bedroom. We're hesitant to believe him though, so when night comes, we go stand across the street and look at her window. Her light is on, so you can kind of see vague silhouette shadows of the furniture between her lamp and the window. There's this one shadow that looks unmistakably like a person. The kid was exaggerating. You can tell with any certainty that someone is there, but it sure looks like someone is there. We're like WTF still. We go upstairs. There's no one in her room, obviously. We try rearranging all the furniture to change the shadows on the window. From outside, it still looks like there's a person there in the same exact spot. Nothing we do changes it. It just always looks like a person is there no matter what. Even years later, I'm afraid to even drive down that street because after we first moved out, we still lived in the same neighborhood. I would still see the same shape in the window. Her window still scares me. I don't go to that street anymore. Let me explain why my sister used a lamp in her bedroom. One night, Elle is laying in her bed in the dark when she hears the closet door creak. Looks over. It's still closed. Hears it creak again like it's opening. It's still closed. She pretends it's not happening. 
She's seriously tough, okay? I would have been screaming. The springs at the foot of her bed start to spring, one by one, in a fluid motion moving from the end of the bed towards her, as if someone is slowly climbing onto the mattress. You know which sound I'm talking about. At this point, she loses her cool and flies off her bed to her door. Tries to open it, but it's suddenly locked. She never locks it because her room freaks us all out. Turns on the ceiling light, but the bulb shatters so hard it breaks the glass cover. The door is completely stuck and won't open. She screams until the door finally breaks free of the frame and she can run out. Elle never slept in her room again after that the whole time we lived there. She slept in the playroom next to my bedroom and left the light on every night. Eventually, my brother wouldn't sleep in his room anymore because Elle's closet shared a wall with his closet, and he began to hear noises in there during the night. It might have been simple paranoia, but he started sleeping in the playroom too. I don't blame them. Oh, and the ceiling light never worked in her room again after that. Multiple electricians tried to fix it to no avail. Has Elle ever considered exorcisms or something like that? It's hard to explain Elle's personality. I know she has to believe all this shit happened because most of it happened to her. But she always joked about it and made light of it. She's never been religious and never really believed in anything at all, really. Above all, she doesn't like asking for help or ever admitting she needs any. She would think the idea of an exorcism was completely laughable. She is an ignorant person, then. Sounds like she deserved it. I can see why you say that, but I disagree. She's not laughing at it in arrogance. She's always laughed at everything bad that's ever happened to her, long before the creepy stuff ever started happening. We had a fucked up childhood and making a joke out of everything became her coping mechanism. I'm not surprised it bled over into the haunting thing, too. A random anecdote. Early years of us living there with the Step family. Me, L, and stepsister G are sitting at the dining room table talking. Suddenly, L quiets with this weird look on her face. Immediately after that, G quiets too. I'm wondering why we stop talking when I hear it. Rustling sound. It's that distinct sound that your jeans make when you walk the way the fabric rubs together rhythmically, moves past L and G, and eventually the sound stops somewhere in the front room. We all look at each other. L speaks first. You guys heard that, right? G says, you mean those footsteps? I'm like WTF, I was hoping I imagined that. Let's see, what else? I mean, I could sit here and bore you with the thousands of instances when we saw lights turn on and off, or when we heard doors close, or when we saw people that weren't there. But I'm trying to think of actual stories. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, I got one. It's the second time we lived there, no step family. I'm in my room, which is arguably one of the least haunted rooms, luckily. Only some problems with my lights and that ambient radio voice's noise. But as I'm trying to sleep this night, I'm a freaking insomniac, tossing and turning. I think I hear something, something kind of soft, like someone is dragging paper across the wall or something. But I can see no one and nothing is in my room. Like I said, L and M slept in the playroom with the light on by this point, so it was never fully dark in my room. I keep hearing the noise, but decide it's probably nothing. Maybe it's them breathing in the playroom or something. The next morning I get up. I notice as I'm leaving my room that there is a tiny handprint on my wall. It's just smudges like as if a really dirty kid put their hand there. Except no one with hands that little has been in my house for years at this point. Not only that, but the handprint is directly in front of my desk. No way that slipped my notice for this long. I show it to everyone, but it creeps us out, so I clean it off. I remember this thread really interesting. Thanks for sharing your story with us. Are you still planning to try another Ouija session? To be honest, I don't know. I kind of want to. It's been so long since all this happened that I'm no longer so scared. But the night after that last time we went there, I don't know, man, I couldn't sleep. I felt like I was never going to be the same. Before that night, I was still willing to convince myself it was all some crazy series of coincidences. But that night really, really shook me. I want to try it again because, hell, it's interesting, you know? The possibility that something outside of human understanding actually exists. Hell, it gets to me more than church ever did. So yeah, maybe I would try it again. Unfortunately, someone lives in that house nowadays, so we couldn't go back there. But like I said, I'm more inclined to believe it's my sister that's being haunted and not the house. Well, that could be the only way to figure why it is following L. So it can be useful. And if you are careful and respectful, it shouldn't worsen the situation. So far, this entity doesn't appear really malevolent. Yeah, I guess you could argue it wasn't malevolent. After all, none of us was ever hurt by it. 
But if you ever went into Elle's room, you would feel differently. None of the animals would go near it. Elle herself only went in there for changes of clothes. As soon as you went in there, you could practically feel an atmospheric shift, like walking from a lit room into a dark room, except with no visible change. It was suffocating. It felt like the room itself was trying to expel us from it. Uh, I'm getting chills just remembering the feeling. Not only that, but one thing I haven't mentioned is that for many years now, Elle has been plagued with horrific, bone-chilling nightmares. I won't disclose them here because that is something I don't feel comfortable sharing. But she's always blamed the nightmares on this demon, as we've referred to it since the last fateful Ouija board incident. I don't know if she really thinks they have something to do with the demon, but when she describes the nightmares to me, I get this scalding, liquid feeling in the pit of my stomach. Stuff so horrific you wouldn't see it in Silent Hill, or a Saw movie. It's nightmare stuff that actually makes me believe in demons, you know. But yeah, I stand by what I said. L would never ever agree to an exorcism or anything remotely similar. Even to this day, she hides behind a kind of jokey veil of disbelief, like she thinks it's all some really funny practical joke the universe is playing on her. I can't believe I forgot to mention this one until now. This was probably the third time we tried using a Ouija board and the last time we tried until that one day years later. Sitting on the floor in a circle in the playroom. Me, L, M, A, Y, asking a bunch of questions. The answers are really stupid, so I'm sure one of them is moving it. A accuses L of moving it and L laughs. She promises she isn't doing it. I know her well enough that I can tell by the way she's laughing that it's totally her, so I keep watch on her fingers as we continue on. She must have been serious when she said she would stop. Now she's not actually touching the piece anymore. Now I'm curious as to whether it's A or Y that is moving it. I take my fingers off too, putting them just close enough so that it looks as if I'm touching it. I'm hoping to catch the mover. Suddenly L says, Wait A, are you even touching it? As soon as she says that I realize Y must be the only person touching it. So I immediately look to her fingers, but I realize there's a whole centimeter of space between her fingers and the piece. Look at L and A. They're still mid-realization, looking at each other's fingers. We all realize at the same time that none of us are touching the piece anymore. Piece is still currently moving. There was a second of blood-curdling silence as we all stared at the next person around the circle, like a horror version of a That 70s Show Stoner sequence. After a second, we finally reacted, pulling our hands away from the board. L flips it. Piece goes flying. None of us touch it after that. After we move out, the den house is completely empty except for a single wooden chair. I don't know where the chair came from. It wasn't one we owned. It would always be in different spots whenever we came by. Our house had a rep in the neighborhood, so friends always wanted to go to it, hoping to get spooked. Dee tells me the last time she and her friends went there before the house sold. The chair was sitting in the very center of my bedroom. She happened to tell me this the morning after I had a dream about the den house for the first time in years. Unrelated, but it creeped me out at the time. Her timing was eerie. Right there. You released a spirit. Never let go of the piece without telling it goodbye. Or you release a potentially malevolent spirit. No wonder your sister is getting haunted. I've heard of this before. I'm still bored, so why not? Story of the last time I went in my sister's room alone. We're to the point when L and M no longer sleep in their bedrooms out of fear. L avoids going into her room at all costs. One day she asked me to get her running shoes out of her closet. I really don't want to, but she begs and I love her, so I agree. I mostly only agree because it's broad daylight and well lit in there. Go upstairs. See that shadow in the corner of my eye where we always see it, moving around on the other side of the stair rail around the corner to where Elle's room is. You'd think I'd run, but seriously, this was an everyday occurrence for us. It was almost routine. I'm almost more annoyed than I am scared. I go in there anyways like a dumbass because I know Elle is too scared to, but won't admit to it. Walk in there slowly like I always do. Ready to bolt at any moment. Go to her closet, which is a walk-in. Push the door gently ready to reach in and turn on the light. Door opens inward by the way. The door is stuck on all the clothes and junk all over her floor in the closet. It was a serious pigsty. Try to push it more. It's still stuck on all the clothes and won't go very far. I turn on the light then, ready to squeeze myself into the crack of the door to move the clothes, just find the damn shoes. As soon as I turn on the light, I retract my hand like I touched a hot iron. There is a shadow on the part of her dresser I can see through the crack in the door. A person-shaped shadow. 
as if someone is standing behind the door inside the closet. As I step backward like a dumb idiot, the shadow sort of lunges to the side so that I can't see it anymore, and the door creaks loudly, opening another inch or so. I run away. Last time I went there by myself. I warned them against going in there when we went back with the Ouija board that one time. I warned them. So how old are all of you now? Or rather, what year was it when you first moved in? And what year was it when you went back with the Ouija board for the last time? Yeah, let me give a clear time frame. When we moved into the den house for the first time, me and Elle were in 7th and 8th grade, respectively. So we were, uh, I think that made us 11 and 13. I think that's right. We moved out of the house two years after that, away from the step fam. We lived in two different houses in the same neighborhood the next year and a half. And then at the end of that, we moved back into the den house, where we lived until the year I graduated high school. We moved out that summer, and a month after that I moved into my own house, which is when the final Ouija board story happens. So when the final Ouija board thing occurred, I was 17 and L was 19. I'm not going to explain my other siblings' relative ages in the timeline because it doesn't matter, but M is three years younger than me, and D is two years younger than him. Ever plan on going back? I don't know, I'm honestly running out of stories. Most of the stuff that happened is hundreds of times that lights turned on and off with no reason. Sometimes the switches themselves would actually flip. Like we would hear the flipping of the switch. We would hear footsteps upstairs when we were home alone. Sometimes I would hear footsteps in the hall when everyone but me was fast asleep. It happened so often, though, that they're all kind of lumped together in my memory. I've already told all the scariest things that happened. Some of the most heart-stopping moments, though, weren't as full of stories. It was as simple as walking into my bedroom and hearing my bathroom door click shut as if someone just went in there, but then going around the corner to investigate and seeing the door never shut at all. That happened often. We would hear doors closing or opening when no such thing was happening. One time there was a shadow in the crack under my door, as if someone was standing right on the other side. I was home alone. I steadfastly ignored it as I read, trying to drown out my horror. When I looked up again, the shadow was gone. Once I was playing on my stepsister's keyboard while I was home alone, because she never let me play it, and I was just goofing around playing heart and soul and messing up a lot. I went downstairs to eat something, but I heard the distinct plinking of keys upstairs, and suddenly realized it was the same song I had just been playing. And I listened, unnerved, as the song messed up in the exact same measure when I had messed up. I didn't check until later when my friend came over but the keyboard was indeed off. Holy ravioli. I completely forgot to mention, I mean, it never seemed relevant in the context before, but regarding everything I was mentioned about my cat Spanky before. I mean, if he really did have some idea what was going on, some weird animalistic instinct to protect us from it, then this would make sense. We moved out of the den house for the first of two times, moved to a smaller house literally around the corner. Spanky gets out and he doesn't come back after a day like he usually does. We get worried and start searching. Eventually I find him at the empty den house in the backyard. For some reason he runs from me which is unusual for him. I have to chase him to the back wall and grab him. I'm shocked when he's writhing in my arms, struggling to get away. What is up with him? He's actually scratching me in his effort to get away, which is downright weird for him to do. He's usually stoic and nice if a little cuddly. Never would he ever scratch me. Maybe he is just in shock from moving, I don't know. Really, I know that can't be true because he's been through like six moves in his lifetime and he's always been the only cat that was indifferent to it. Eventually, my mom gets there and helps me restrain him and bring him home. But he keep escaping after that. Every few weeks, he would slip out. He's never done it with that frequency before. And when he had in the past, he was never gone for more than a day or so. But now he stays gone until we find him. We quickly learn to like at the den house first thing. He's always there. I don't know why. We move eventually to another house, another street away. He still does it. We still find him at the den house every time. This continues until we move back into the den house. His behavior abruptly returns to normal for a long while, until the time much later which I talked about above when he began disappearing for long stretches of time. When Spanky disappeared for those long stretches of time, do you ever feel the entity still being in your house during those time periods? Or was the house in a calm atmosphere? God, that's such an interesting question. I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't. 
I'm really interested to know now, but it's lost. It's been too long, and I never connected those things to each other before, so I have no way of remembering that. I never kept any kind of track. Damn. It's just that with that new piece of evidence about Spanky, it seems like Spanky returns to the Den House to keep the entity at bay, as way to protect you and your family. This is also knowing that it likes to follow your family around. Also, when you guys move back into the Den House, the way you worded it makes it to where Spanky is actually shooing away the entity, or having it follow him to a faraway distance, as a way to keep it from returning. This is why whenever Spanky returns and starts checking every room, he's actually making sure the entity never came back. And if it does, the process starts all over again. Shame he never returned during that one disappearance you wrote. Also, where did you find Spanky? From my knowledge, cats don't really do that unless trained to. Egyptians used to train and use cats to ward away demonic and harmful spirits, and believed cats had the ability to swallow the spirit and take them to the underworld when they passed. If he wasn't trained, that cat is a badass. My cat did the same thing. Some cats are very spiritually inclined and feel a need to protect themselves and their people. Cats are more perceptive than one might think. You have to admit that cats seem like they know paranormal shit too. We got him when he was a couple weeks old. He was half Siamese, half alley cat mutt, and he had these piercing green eyes. But no, he was never trained in any formal sense. In fact, I always got the feeling he was never litter trained or trained to stay off the counters and not eat our food. He only did that stuff because he liked us. Ha ha ha. He was the kind of cat you felt could actually understand everything you were saying to him. Like I would tell him, hey, I'm leaving, okay, bye, Spanx. And he would run to the front door like he wanted to see me out. That cat was so damn clever. Good cat. Is there any more activity following his death? Unfortunately, my knowledge of all the stuff happening afterwards is pretty thin on the ground since it was all occurring at L's various apartments. There's only one full story I remember, and I already told it somewhere above. Mostly it was lights again, cupboards slamming and shit, the silverware, the radio noise. Her roommates, every single one of them, independently came to her to ask if she thought it was possible their apartment was haunted. This, of course, always freaked her right the hell out because she never ever talked about the den house or any of the haunting stuff to her roommates, because they would either think she was crazy or not want a room with her. Since I'm pretty much out of coherent stories, I'll tell you one more little thing to go out with a bang. I said before I wouldn't disclose the contents of her dreams, and I stand by that. But I'll tell you this. She kept quiet about them for the longest time. I knew she had nightmares, but she always laughed them off. I never knew the extent to which she was having them. The first time she told me all about one of the dreams was after she had moved out, when she was living with roommate R, I think. She woke up from the nightmare, the contents of which I won't go into, screaming in the night, soaked in her own blood and her boyfriend's blood, who was next to her. She was just screaming and trying to wipe away the blood and figure out where it was coming from and get out of it. Her boyfriend, the same boyfriend from the Ouija board story, told me she was writhing and crying about blood in her sleep, and he had to shake her awake violently to get her to snap out of it. Dreams within dreams always screw with me, but in her case I can't even imagine. Anywho, that's probably the last story I'll be posting. My memory well has run dry. Feel free to post your own related stories though. All the ones you guys have posted so far have been really interesting. Well, since we're all doing the sibling thing. My family rented two apartments out of a three-apartment house. My mom and dad stayed on the second floor while me and my brother were in the top floor, which was an attic before it was converted. Anyways, my brother started complaining about the cat scratching him in his sleep, so I started keeping the cat in my room. Too bad the scratching didn't stop. It was all down his back in places he couldn't reach himself. At that time, nothing really happened to me. I just got a bad feeling if I left my room at night. I didn't want to say it at the time since it sounds stupid, but I felt like the apartment belonged to someone else at night, and the longer I was out of my room, the more I annoyed it. From my room I heard footprints that sounded like they walked around my apartment. A woman humming a melody, things falling over for no reason, and my brother's door opening, closing throughout the night. Sometimes I thought he woke up and got to get a drink of water, but if I called his name he wouldn't answer. The tipping point for my brother was when a picture of him and his GF went missing from his Bible. After questioning us, he threw a fit. 
I mean, he was screaming all throughout the house, just basically talking shit to this ghost. At one point, he kind of just said, Give me the picture, and I'm out of here. Well, the next day comes around, and guess what's sticking out of the Bible? The picture. He moved in with his GF that weekend. After my brother moved out, things seemed to pick up on my end. The humming footprints were louder and more frequent. They also seemed to be right outside my room on a few occasions. It was almost as if someone was walking around my apartment over and over again all night. I should have mentioned that I always kept my door closed at night. I felt that it made my room my space. For a while, everything stopped, which kind of made me second guess whether I really believed there was something in my house. So one night, I left my door open while I watched TV. At first, it felt great. My room was small, and I felt like I was closed off from the rest of my house in there which was a good thing sometimes. But with the door open, my room felt so much more open and like a part of my apartment. After about five minutes, that good feeling faded. Then I heard the footsteps again. I can't describe this feeling too well, but I couldn't close my door. I knew I should have, and I wanted to, but I couldn't. It was almost as if I knew the rules and I broke them so I deserved what I got next. I think I was frozen on my bed for like five minutes before I heard someone hum a song right into my ear. Needless to say, I ran downstairs to my parents' apartment and slept there. I kind of feel like that opened a door for her to go into my room. The footsteps, humming, happened every night outside my door. During that time period, I was also having trouble staying asleep. I'd wake up at least once in the middle of the night. Some nights, the footsteps and humming were in my room. It would start on the other side of the apartment and just walk in my room like she had every right, then walk to the other side of the apartment again. I never got scratched like my brother, but one thing did happen to me, which made me move downstairs until I was able to move out with my BF. Before I go finish, I just want to say that in the midst of this, my friends stopped sleeping over due to whatever was there. They felt the same feeling of unease and heard the footsteps. Once a friend saw someone in my brother's room, I don't know who left the door open since I always kept it shut, and she stopped coming over altogether. Another wanted so bad to do a Ouija board session, but screw that. My mom told me about her experience with it, and that scared me into never touching one. Anyways, back to my last night in my room. So it was a normal night, except for the fact that I woke up anywhere between 2 to 4 a.m. freezing cold. I was so cold that I was shaking so much it looked like I was seizing. I begrudgingly left my room to go get more comforters and tried to go back to sleep, but I couldn't. I just kept getting colder and colder. I had three down comforters on me, and I was still cold to my bones. At that point, I was shaking so bad I could barely walk. I had to crawl down my flight of stairs to my parents. My mom woke up and was freaking out. I couldn't tell her what happened since I couldn't talk, but she knew something was wrong. She tried to hold me still, but I was still shaking so bad that I was kicking slash kneeing slash elbowing her, and leaving bruises. I'm pretty sure I just passed out after a while, but I've honestly never been that scared. The next day, I stayed in my mom's bed downstairs since I pulled muscles from all my spasming. I also chewed my tongue and cheeks up pretty bad from it. And that's the last time I slept in my room. What's the story with your mom and the Ouija board? Nothing really exciting. I can't even remember the good parts. All I know is that she messed around with one, got freaked out, threw it away. The only thing was that it wouldn't go away. It'd keep showing up on her doorstep or in her room. I forgot what she did to finally get rid of it. I think she broke it and threw it in the ocean. Thanks for the stories, OP. The house I grew up in was actually haunted too. We lived in a village on the foot of a mountain, and my mom said a lot of prisoners of war were buried there from World War II. I can't find any history on that place though, apart from it being Japanese-occupied territory during that time. There were also a lot of haunted houses in that village. Across from my grandma's place, lived my grandma's friend. Always sent my mom when she is a kid to her friend's place on errand. Tells her never to look out the windows. And don't ever look up the staircase. My mom goes to that house, enters into the living room. Was a bit cheeky, decides to look up the stairs to see if grandma's friend was there. Instead, she sees a European-looking young woman. This was in the Philippines, probably a mestiza standing at the top of the staircase dressed in traditional Filipino clothing, the Maria Clara C. Pick. She's looking into the distance. My mom stares for a while. Grandma's friend comes out of the kitchen into living room. 
Mom goes to greet her, asks her about her foreign guest. Grandma's friend is all nope. It's just me here. Mom looks back at the staircase. No one there. Whenever my mom recalls this story, she always told us that the woman was way too beautiful to be a native, ha, and looked as if she was pulled from an entirely different time period in looks alone. I used to hear all sorts of strange sounds in my first house in Lansdowne, just outside of Philly. I can clearly remember hearing scratching on the walls of my room and facing my closet and what sounded like heavy breathing right at the end of my bed. I also remember one summer off from school when I was around six. Me and my sister had decided to sleep in the same room, which had been just my room before, and same room I heard noises in. This one night, I woke up feeling something on my legs, like some was sitting on them. I woke up to yell at my sis to see just a black, massive shadow at the foot, my bed, and the cover I had was on the floor, like it was tossed there. The shadow just slipped away, and before I could even say anything, I just heard heavy breathing start. I couldn't move. I just stared at my sister's bed, a few feet to the left. At the end of my bed, she was sound asleep, not aware to what was happening. I just stared at her until I started to see her cover being pulled from the corner of her bed. I worked up the courage and reached for my bedside light and clicked it on. When I looked back to my sister's bed, her cover wasn't moving, and I noticed I could no longer hear the breathing. I walked to pick up my cover and woke my sister to tell her what had happened. She didn't believe me when I told her, and told me to stop joking and go to sleep. I heard other noises in the house like whispering, and sometimes like someone was blowing in my ear when I tried to do homework or watch TV. But I never saw a shadow again. We moved to new home in a close town, but had to get dropped off at my grandma place every day so my mom could go to work. And as if something new, the last time before school was going to start, and I wouldn't see the house again. I noticed all the blinds had been pulled up, and even the windows. It was early morning in summer, nice and bright. I noticed my sister also seeing what I was looking at, but she wasn't looking around just at my old bedroom window. Since you've graced us with your stories, I'll throw a couple of my own at you. I need a bit to type though. I'm on my phone. Music keeps me sane as I type. Organic audio. Nurega. Good stuff. Okay, this is back when I was like four. Living in house in Virginia. Furnished basement. I would walk down hallway and I had three voices I would talk to. One was a kind old guy. Didn't talk much but was more comforting than spoopy. Women kinda like old guy but almost no patience for my retard answers since I was four. That guy. I don't know what else to call him. He would talk to me from like 20 feet away, but then whisper behind my ear three seconds later. I didn't like him for obvious reasons. Mom would be doing laundry and Moo Brother, may he rest in peace, we'll call him Peter, would hang out in the basement with his bros, it was his room as well. Super loud one day, so Mom swings open the basement door and yells down steps telling him to be quiet. No noise, only washing machine and dryer sounds. Me sleeping in mom's bed. We both wake up to white mist, I guess is best word. Thicker, then smoke and low to ground. See it go underneath door to basement. Hear voices coming from basement shortly after, and door opens. Peter goes into bathroom, pees, then closes door and goes back downstairs. I hear voices much more often now, like five times a day. Mom hears whispers of my name now too, like hisses, cuss my name is Seth. One day I come home from school. Mom picks me up from bus stop. We walk to the house, see curtains from the kitchen move. Mom goes in and I follow like an idiot, hearing my name in whispers from a lot of different voices. Old guy bro suddenly tells me to get out. Door to basement starts to shake violently, hear wood splintering, pictures shaking on walls. Door rips off hinges and slams into the wall, falling sideways. Mom and I are out of the house by then. The front door opens so we can see down the hallway. 
See my room's door swing open, loud screaming sound. Porch feels like earthquake. We slam the front door shut and go to stay at Graham's place for a couple days. I never went back, Kant. I complained cuz I'm a dumb kid. Mom went back. Pictures of me are missing, but house is just fine. Except my room. Oh God, why my room? Claw marks on the inside of the door, as if something wanted out. My room was ransacked, the mattress flipped, like they were looking for me. Mom is about to leave the house, but she hears the old guy bro talk. Is he safe? Yes. Turns out my dad was like 50 when I was born. He died the same year, so he would be 70 now. I think it was my dad, but I said she didn't recognize the voice. Have you ever had those sleeping whispers? You know, the ones when you're highly suggested and tired and that keeps talking to you from quietness itself? Well, I was 10 years old the first time I stayed up late. Decide I might as well watch some ghost videos on YouTube, spend like two or three hours looking at this shit. Eventually I needed to go to the bathroom. Master toilet was downstairs and it was pitch black. Went all alpha on this bitch, lights all out to prove to myself I wasn't afraid of no ghost. Worst idea of my life. Slowly go to the toilet. Hear someone calling my name from inside. It sounded playful, like a little girl. What? She just kept calling my name, so I opened the door. The next thing I saw was the most fucked up thing I've ever seen in my life. It was like a shadow, but with a body. I quickly turned on the light and the creature just disappeared. I keep hearing voices in my head. That's why I don't ever let myself be in sheer silence. I have the TV on right now. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time. Remember to check the Odyssey and Rumble pages for separate archives of previous broadcasts.